Okay guys, how are you doing? Uh, we are coming back to our lectures. Hopefully you did well on the exam and hopefully you're ready because the next part of the class will be building on what we learned before. It will be closely connected to Plato, Aristotle and ancient Greek philosophy. However, we are entering a very interesting and exciting period which starts with the birth of Christ, Christianity. Christianity affected um, Western society to its very core from the very beginning, from the moment it has um, started with Christ's teachings from the first years when Christ was uh, crucified in Judea for his teachings and all the way to our day. Today we still many of us, majority I would say, of people who live in the West consider ourselves Christians. So what exactly is interesting about this period? Well, we'll mainly talk about this key figure, which I do not have time on for uh, in the discussion on uh, Wednesday, so I actually want to bring him right now. And this is St. Augustine. St. Augustine lived um, a few hundred years after Christ was crucified. His years of life we know pretty well, 354 to 430. How do we know that? He actually left an excellent book of memoirs called Confessions, where he talks about his life. Other than that, there is other evidence, but um, we will not talk as much about his personal story, but we will also use him as a key figure to understand what was happening at that time. St. Augustine wasn't always, of course, a saint, and he wasn't even always a Christian. In the earlier part of his life, he was Manichaean. What does that mean, Manichaean? Well, at that time, there were several different, um, you may say, sects based on uh, partly New Testament, Gospels, the Word of Christ, and partly on variety of other beliefs. Um, Manichaeanism was actually one of them. Um, Mani was Iranian prophet and um, they had an interesting take on the figure of Christ, interesting take on Christianity. In particular, they, be they believed that there were actually two gods, the god of light and the god of darkness. Um, the Christ was sent by the God of light to save people, whereas the God of darkness was actually um, as powerful as the God of light, and he was um, contradicting the God of light. He was the source of all evil in the world. So they actually believed that evil was this creation of this God of darkness. Note that it also is related to Christianity, however, it's considered one of the heresies. Um, in fact, heresy in classical Greek just means choice. People had different choices what to believe at the time. And there were a variety of different beliefs. Um, people were sometimes confused which one to pick. And again, St. Augustine at first actually joined many cans. Uh, in the same time, in the Roman Empire, up to the year 312, up to 312, um, the Roman Empire was pagan, and um, the religion there was pagan religion. They prosecuted Christians. Uh, in the year 312, which, as you can see, that's um, 42 years before St. Augustine was born, um, Emperor Constantine accepted Christianity as official religion of the Roman Empire. And again, just to remind you, uh, not only Judea was Jesus, where Jesus was crucified, but uh, even Northern Africa, where St. Augustine was born, at the time was part of the huge, powerful Roman Empire with a center in Rome. So what were the concerns of the first Christians? One of the concerns was how do you square um, faith, religion, with um, logic, with reasoning, with, in particular, Greek philosophy, with philosophy in general? Because, as you remember, as we talked about 
right before the exam, uh, several rather popular Greek uh, philosophical movements, Stoicism, Epicureanism, Skepticism, were uh, widespread at the time. And again, St. Augustine, after uh, he got disappointed with many cans, after he realized that their teaching, as he says, does not make uh, sense, doesn't answer the important questions, uh, became a skeptic for a period of time. And hopefully you remember what skeptics were. They actually thought that you cannot even have knowledge. Now, uh, that was not a very long period of time. And after that, um, St. Augustine moved towards Christianity. He accepted Christianity. He did get baptized uh, officially as a Christian around year um, 386, so somewhere when he was 32 years old. Fairly grown person, but he accepted uh, Christianity with all his heart. He rejected uh, Manichaeans, he rejected skepticism, he thought that Christianity was the best religion, the religion of true God. Now, one of the reasons he actually uh, rejected Manichaeans is because he thought their explanation of why evil existed was not very good. He thought that thinking of evil as coming from uh, a separate deity is not a good explanation. Why not? Well, he was actually using it, using his reason. Uh, and his reason told him that it does not make sense that God would not be all-powerful. God, who is all-good, has to be all-powerful. So the explanation that there was some other evil God fighting him did not make very much sense. The Greek philosophy which had the most profound effect on St. Augustine was Neoplatonism. Okay, so according to uh, Neoplatonism, which made a rather significant impression on St. Augustine, uh, evil is not created by some sort of evil god. Evil is uh, just lack of god. The less god you have, the more evil something is. And since Neoplatonism is essentially based on the dialects of Plato, it also associates evil with matter. So this is how you can look at it um, from that perspective. Imagine that you have God here. God, of course, is absolutely good. Now what would be on this end evil? That would be matter. Matter. God is spiritual. Matter is the furthest away from God. Now what is here, right in the middle? Man. This is where man is. And woman, of course. Uh, in this sense, it's just, you can say the same thing. Okay, so human being. Human being is right here in the middle. Human being is related to God in its spiritual part, human being is related to matter in its body, in its material part. That's the part which kind of dragging us down. The more we go towards the matter, the more we serve evil. The more we go towards God, the more we serve good. Now that uh, impressed St. Augustine so much that he converted to Christianity, he became Christian, and um, at the age of 32, and for the rest of his life, he um, wrote extensively, and he became a bishop. He became a bishop of Hippo in 396. He wrote um, extensively, including his well-known memoir, Confessions, where he basically tells us about his life, and how he came to Christianity, what moved him, um, and describes uh, his religious beliefs. So how did St. Augustine answer the question of relation between faith and reason? That important question which we um, started with. Well, according to St. Augustine, first you have to have faith. 
only faith can help you reason to find the correct way. Faith is in that sense of the starting point, the archaea, that principle you have to look for. And then you can find it within yourself and the most important um, element for this is love towards God. This is the key according to St. Augustine. Love. Now your love can lead you towards God or it can lead you towards yourself. If your love is towards yourself, you will uh, reach falsity. But if your love is towards God, you will reach the truth. And you can only know the truth and you can only understand the truth if you love God. This is the starting point. This is where you can start building up um, using your reason. But you cannot start with the reason. So according to St. Augustine, all those Greek philosophers, even though they were kind of on the right track, remember Plato did talk about the good and so on, but nonetheless they could never be um, completely saved because they did not love God. They were talking about it using just their reason, just this kind of um, mental exercises, uh, rather than their heart, rather than their souls. Now another important question which uh, Augustine deals with is the question of our freedom of the will. If God is all-powerful, how come we have freedom? What does that even mean for us to have freedom? So, for example, if God um, knows already what will happen tomorrow, that tomorrow you will go to a party or something, do you really have freedom not to go to a party? Well, his answer is yes, even though God knows very well what will happen. But in the same time, you have freedom. You can still freely choose what you're going to do. Um, why? How is it possible? Well, it's possible because God is outside of time. God is not part of time. He did not even create the world in time. Time was created together with the world. So, God being internal doesn't mean that God existed uh, for billions of years before and He will exist for billions of years in the future. It just means He is completely outside of time. And so, He simultaneously knows everything that will happen. In the same time, you do have freedom of the will, because on a daily basis, you still can do uh, things which you want to do. There is no reason whatsoever why you would not be able to um, choose freely. And this is again where you can create evil, because if you go down that road of self-falsity, if you go towards the road which leads you towards yourself, rather than towards God, now that would be a, a mistake if you serve yourself rather than serving God. Service to the God is the only way for you to be saved. Um, so not surprisingly, St. Augustine is considered a saint by the Christian Church. His works are considered fundamental to the um, Church doctrine. In the same time, we can see that he was a philosopher because he was um, dealing with all these issues not just through reading New Testament not just through biblical stories he was using his reason he was trying to interpret it and that is what makes him a philosopher as well as um, a religious leader so just one more thing we need to Cover is um, the well-known work which Augustine has written before the end of his life. Um, it is called The City of God. And in this work he was talking about Rome. Now, Rome was, during his lifetime, sacked by barbarians for the first time. And it was very shocking experience for all the Romans who 
further from as this holy grail. For them it was um, the, the effect of that sacking was kind of like September 11th for Americans. It was so the strike right in the heart. And many people at the time suggested that it was happening because the uh, Roman Empire was moving away from the gods of their fathers, from these multiple um, gods which they had before as pagans, to Christianity. They were blaming Christian God. Now, St. Augustine responded to that by um, writing the book and not only does he mean Rome itself and he talks about city of God, he uh, kind of goes further. He's talking about city of God as the entire uh, world, the world essentially, the world of um, people who believe in God would be a city of God. And he says that we all can um, choose in our lives between the city of God and the worldly city. So the worldly city again would be here. And the city of God would be here. You may even call it the Republic of God. So each one of us chooses between the two. And he's saying Rome was not sacked because it chose Christianity because it cho chose God. It never really chose God. Um, even though officially Christian religion was accepted, but Romans were still not living the life of God. They were not full of love. In fact, in, you probably know about gladiators, about these bloody battles on the arena. Uh, that's a good example of the way Romans lived at the time. So according to uh, St. Augustine, this is why uh, Rome was punished. Rome was not punished because it moved from being barbarian towards being Christian. Rome was punished because it was not a city of God. It was worldly city, a city of self-love. Only um, technically it was Christian, but it was not truly Christian. So this is kind of a... a important contribution to philosophy too because this is actually one of the first attempts um, we can talk about when somebody tried to use actual history to explain the events um, of the world. He was taking history and giving it a particular interpretation. This is why um, the City of God is important philosophical work as well as you can also say it has its place in theology. Okay, so St. Augustine again was kind of a key figure to take us from this um, days of classical Greek philosophy to what we will be talking about on Wednesday, which is medieval period. Medieval period starts a little bit later from the time when Rome finally fell to the barbarians. And it will happen... Uh, couple of hundred years later, after the death of um, St. Augustine. We will talk about this period on Wednesday, and then we will rather quickly pass it and get to Renaissance and get closer to our time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this lecture. Thank you very much.